Okay guys, after discussing about the hematomatous polyps, now let's see what are the different types of hematomatous polyps. Look, the first hematomatous polyp that I am going to discuss is called as juvenile polyposis syndrome. Okay, juvenile polyposis syndrome by birth itself, juvenile means not just by birth, juvenile means a small like age person right like a three year old or five year old usually it is seen in children less than five years of age okay see this juvenile polyposis syndrome most commonly the polyps are going to be seen in the rectum so this is also called as juvenile rectal polyp okay juvenile rectal polyp so it's the same thing so juvenile rectal polyps are also seen in the patients or the children less than 5 years of age. See why we are discussing about the juvenile polyposis syndrome now? It's because it's a hematomatous polyp, this juvenile rectal polyposis or the juvenile polyposis syndrome, these are the multiple hematomatous polyps that are seen in the intestine. Okay, it's seen in the intestine. So how many polyps should be there sir? At least more than 5 polyps. Okay, so at least more than 5 polyps in colon or rectum is needed to establish the diagnosis, to establish the diagnosis. But what is the most common site? I have explained to you the most common site is rectum. Okay, now in the recent exam also, this was a question which was asked. See, there is this boy who is less than 5 years of age and now he is having this rectal polyp, juvenile rectal polyp in the rectum. Now what are the clinical features? How this baby is going to come to your clinic? See mom is going to take this baby and say mom is going to say that whenever this baby is going for the toilet washroom, the baby is having stool like you know the uh, blood is there in the stools. Okay, Whenever this baby is going for the stools there is blood, red color stools. So there is hematochesia means fresh blood is there, it's not melena. Melena is black colored stools. Okay, melena is because of upper bleeding. Okay, upper GI bleeding can cause melena. So, peptic ulcer bleeding or the duodenal ulcer bleeding. So, that blood while it is passing through all the intestines will be degraded, RBCs will be de degraded. So, that there will be melena, black colored stools. This is hematochesia, which is fresh bleeding. Okay, fresh bleeding, sir. This is fresh bleeding. Next, what else can be seen? So, these patients, because of this uh, bleeding, the patient can have anemia. Baby is going to have anemia. Which anemia, sir? Iron deficiency anemia. Okay, the patient can have iron deficiency anemia. If you ask me, so why all this problem? The juvenile polyposis syndrome, why? What's the problem? What's the gene mutations? So, the genetic mutations here in this condition, you already know it, already I have shown you in this table. See, the juvenile polyposis syndrome, what are the gene mutations that are seen? SMAD4 and BMPR1A gene mutations. So, let me write here, the gene mutations here are same, SMAD4 and BMPR1A gene mutations. Okay. So, along with this, does this baby is going to have any other things, any other features, clinical features? See, this baby is usually have hereditary, hemorrhagic, because of this MAD4, especially SMAD4 gene mutations, hereditary hem hemorrhagic telangiectasias. Okay, hereditary hem hemorrhagic telangiectasias can be present in this baby and uh, these babies are at risk of complications. What are the complications? See the complications are going to be colorectal or extracolonic adenocarcinomas can be possible. So colorectal or extracolonic adenocarcinomas. Okay, adenocarcinomas can be possible. Not only this, these patients can also have AV malformations. Okay, arteriovenous malformation. Because of this arteri uh, arteriovenous, okay, arteriovenous uh, uh, malformations, there can be distal clubbing in the babies. Distal clubbing. 
can be appreciated in these babies. So these are important points regarding the juvenile polyposis syndrome. In the juvenile polyposis syndrome, the most common site of this tumors, uh, the tumors, sorry, not the tumors, the most common site of this polyps is going to be in the rectum. So these polyps they will bleed and that will cause iron deficiency anemia. The patients are also going to have the extra. Uh, like uh, also going to have a hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia these patients are at risk of developing colorectal cancers in the future okay colorectal cancers are extra colonic endocarcinomas can be possible and these patients are also going to have the digital clubbing because of the av, AV malformations what are the gene mutations associated the gene mutations are smad4 bmpr1a gene mutations okay and uh, what else for the diagnosis at least you need to have more than five polyps in the rectum so it's done now when you take a biopsy okay when you take a biopsy in this baby okay five years old baby what you can see here is cystically dilated glands okay cystically dilated glands with a lot of mucin so this is what i have discussed here also look this is the cystically dilated glands in the last video introductory video i have discussed cystically dilated glands are there okay the same thing on histology microscopic examination there are cystically dilated glands okay cystically dilated glands are present next putzeger syndrome so in this putzeger syndrome what else you should know so no it's not a stomach sorry so putzeger syndrome see why we are discussing about the putzeger syndrome now the point is i have already said you that the putzeger syndrome is going to have the hematomatous polyps hematomatous polyps so that's why look what are the important points which you should know say in putzeger syndrome usually it is seen uh, again in children somewhere around 11 years okay children of somewhere around 10 11 years putzeger syndrome what is the most common location of the polyp the most common location of the polyps is jejunum in juvenile polyposis syndrome the most common location of the polyp is rectum here it is jejunum okay putzeger remember j for jejunum okay see multiple hematomatous polyps are there okay not only that mucocutaneous pigmentations okay mucocutaneous pigmentation now whenever this is a very famous image that will be coming up in every exam okay so you can see this pigmentation mucocutaneous pigmentation that's the important thing and usually family history is going to be positive okay family history is going to be positive so why all this problem is because of the mutation of a gene which is called as stk11 stk11 this is also already i have discussed with you okay here so look stk11 gene mutation so i have shown you the BAPS. how the BAPS is looking like i have said you it's looking like a tree arborizing network branching proper branching is there so look here so the histology see it's very clear how it's looking like it's looking like a tree okay branching here also see how beautifully it is branching so on histology so the most characteristic finding the most characteristic finding is the presence of arborizing network of lamina propria glands and smooth muscles and connective tissue so wherever you see this word arborizing network of smooth muscles glands okay so then you have to think about it is a putzeger syndrome where you can have multiple hematomatous polyps most commonly in the juvenile region with mucocutaneous lentigenosis or mucocutaneous pigmentation okay so these are also like you know the hematomatous polyps the putzeger syndrome the arborizing network looking like a tree and see here also mucocutaneous pigmentation okay putzeger's syndrome now after this when what other conditions in what other conditions you can have hematomatous polyps this is uh, one thing which i have found it in the internet very beautifully given see the condition which i am going to discuss is called as the cowden syndrome okay cowden i have asked you to remember remember the cowden as cowten cowten okay so whenever you see a cow okay whenever you see a cow what do you usually do with the cow we take the milk okay we'll take the milk from where this is the udder okay this is the udder this is nothing but the breast of the cow right so that's the first thing cow and usually cows will have this bell in their neck wherever the cow is going you can have the sound the bell so these patients with the cowden syndrome yes of course they have this multiple hematomas okay in the, in the gastrointestinal tract multiple hematomatous polyps are seen apart from multiple hematomatous polyps they are going to have breast cancer these patients are going to have thyroid cancer the neck okay the bell thyroid cancer okay apart from this what else see these patients will have trichelomomas okay so trichelomoma it's a tumor it's a benign tumor of uh, the hair follicles so these patients are going to have trichelomomas 
like the cow is going to make the moo sound, right? So I used to remember something like that. Okay, so trigliomas. So these patients are going to have multiple hematomatous polyps. The patients with the Cowden syndrome are going to have thyroid carcinoma, breast carcinoma. Remember, these patients will also have endometrial cancer. So all the female related things, endometrial cancer, the breast cancer, okay, the uterine cancer, uterine cancer is nothing but the endometrial cancer. So P10, how to remember P10? Sorry, the Cowden, you have to remember it like P10. So Cowden, remember it like Cow10, Cow10. So the P10 mutations, the P10 is a tumor suppressor gene. If it is mutated, the tumors will occur. So what are the important points that you should know regarding this Cowden syndrome? See, the important points I am writing here, it's a P10 mutation, breast cancer, endometrial cancer, okay, breast cancer, endometrial cancer and hematomas, okay. So, remember Cowden as Cowden, so Cowden syndrome is also completed. Now, after this Cowden syndrome, the next condition where you can have uh, this hematomatous polyps is tuberosclerosis. Tuberosclerosis. See, in this tuberosclerosis, the patient who is suffering the tuberosclerosis, he will also have the hematomatous polyps. Okay, he can also have hematomatous polyps. In this tuberosclerosis, what are the gene mutations? TSC1 gene mutation, TSC2 2 gene mutation already we have discussed this in genetics also TSC1 gene mutation TSC2 gene, two, two gene mutation TSC1 gene it codes for a protein called as Hamartin okay Hamartin and TSC2 gene it is going to code for a protein called as Tuberin so Hamartin and Tuberin so whenever this Hamartin and whenever this Tuberin whenever they are mutated they can cause hematomatous polyps okay hematomatous polyps Okay. So, apart from hepatopatous polyps, these patients with the tuberosclerosis, okay, tuberosclerosis can have what kind of symptoms? You know it, many times we have discussed this. See, the mnemonic is called as the ash leaf. Okay, ash leaf. So, what is this ash leaf? Apart from the tubero, like hematomas, these patients can have ash leaf spots. With this ash leaf macules can be seen. Next, Chagrin's patch, this thick leathery patch in the lumbar region, lumbar vertebral region. That's called as the Chagrin's patch. These patients can have tumors like heart. In the heart, heart rhabdomyomas can be seen. In the lung, lymph, uh, lung lymphangiomyomatosis can be seen. Okay, lymphangiomyomatosis can be seen. Epilepsy can be seen because of the tubers. Okay, because of this small, small tubers in the cortical region. And this is very important. In the kidney session also we have discussed this. There is angiomyolipoma in the kidney. That patients can have angiomyolipomas and F for facial angiofibromas. Okay, so A S H L D A of leaf. So these are the <coughs> conditions which can be seen in the tuberosclerosis but don't forget tuberosclerosis patients can also have hematomatous polyps. Now after this the next syndrome that I want to discuss here is called as a croconite canada syndrome. Okay croconite canada syndrome. So what exactly is this croconite canada syndrome? Okay see this is the one disorder okay croconite canada syndrome which is non-inherited okay this is not inherited okay so not inherited sir this is not inherited. Croconite Canada syndrome is not inherited. Tuberosclerosis is because of the gene mutations, TSC1, TSC2 gene mutations. P10, because uh, see, Cowden syndrome is because of the P10 gene mutation. Sir, Kutzeger syndrome is because of HTK11 gene mutation. Sir, uh, this uh, juvenile polyposis syndrome is because of the SMAD4 and BMPR1A gene mutation. But here there is no gene mutation. Okay, in the Croconite Canada syndrome, it is not inherited. It's a not inherited condition. What are the things which are seen in this croconite canada syndrome look it is acquired first thing okay let me uh, take pink color see acquired it is a non familial it is not inherited but rather it is acquired see in the middle aged okay see what you will see here is hematomas the patients are going to have hematomatous polyps that's why okay we are discussing about the croconite uh, canada syndrome okay Actually, it is cronkite, but usually I say cronkite. Okay, it's cronkite, cronkite Canada syndrome. Okay, see multiple hematomatous polyps are going to be seen, and endomas are going to be seen. Where these hematomatous polyps in the stomach, small bowel, and colon associated symptoms are important. See, in a patient who is having Cowden syndrome, the associated symptoms are something like endometrial cancer, breast cancer, uh, endometrial cancer, breast cancer. Uh, there is a um, macrocephaly. Macrocephaly is going to be there. Okay, trichelomomas can be seen, 
these are the associated symptoms right in Cordin syndrome now what are the associated syndromes what are the associated symptoms in Cronkite Canada syndrome in Cronkite Canada syndrome the associated symptoms are alopecia there is a loss of hair alopecia cutaneous pigmentation can be seen and a dystrophy of the nails okay anychodystrophy dystrophy of the nails can be seen see that's why see here there is anychodystrophy dystrophy of the nails okay there is pigmentation there is pigmentation in the skin okay you can see the pigmentation in the palms and soles and this patient is losing hair alopecia okay with anychodystrophy so nail abnormalities alopecia with multiple hematomatous polyps in the small intestine stomach is Cronkite Canada syndrome which is very important non inherited non inherited okay done after this let me just sum up here what are the different conditions where you will see hematomatous polyps in which conditions you can have the hematomatous polyps one juvenile polyposis syndrome or juvenile rectal polyp which gene mutation smad4 bmpr one year gene mutation next pute zegas polyp in pute zegas polyp there will be stk11 gene mutation stk11 gene mutation if you can remember if you can remember also remember there is lkb1 gene mutation next cowden in Cowden syndrome, there is Cowden, Cowden, P10 gene mutation. Hematomatous polypsin in these three conditions. Not only this, now you should remember tuberosclerosis. Okay, tuberosclerosis, where TSC1 gene mutation, TSC2 gene mutations can be seen. And the last one is Cronkite. Okay, Cronkite Canada syndrome. Cronkite Canada syndrome, never forget about the onychodystrophy okay nail abnormalities skin pigmentation and hair loss Cronkite Canada syndrome what is the gene mutation it is not inherited it's a non inherited disorder now after this let's discuss about neoplastic polyps now, now let's discuss about the neoplastic polyps see hematomatous polyps are not neoplastic polyps now familial adenomatous polyposis fact familial adenomatous polyposis see this familial endomatous polyposis what are the points which you should know is very important the inheritance pattern the inheritance pattern is autosomal recessive sorry autosomal dominant inheritance pattern see ap right ap i should remember like what is the gene mutation the gene mutation is again apc apc gene mutation Okay, the gene mutation is APC gene mutation. This APC gene, it is present on chromosome number 5Q21. This is the locus. This is the locus of the gene. See, this is familial. See, in the name itself, it's a, it's a familial. 100%. See, if a person is having, this is having 100% penetrance. Okay. See, this familial endomatous polyposis is going to have 100% penetrance. Means, those who ever have this mutated APC gene, they will 100% develop not 90% not 90% 100% they will develop cancer okay so these polyps familial endomatous polyposis these polyps will turn into cancer in the future colon cancer they will turn into colon cancer so what you should do see 100% there is a risk of cancer right before 30 years before 30 years itself the patient can develop the cancer so, what we usually do is prophylactic, prophylactic colectomy, okay. So, prophylactic colectomy is performed to decrease the risk, like you know, if you do the prophylactic colectomy, the colon is gone, no polyps. So, if, if there are polyps means 100% they will turn into cancer. So, if you identify array this patient is having multiple polyps and you suspected that this patient is having familial endomatous polyposis. Why? Because the family history is also positive for the familial endomatous polyposis. So, what you have to do? Prophylactic colectomy. Okay. Otherwise, he will turn in, he will get it, he will get into the cancer. Okay. Now, 
one more important point which I want you to know here is, so there is one more gene which is called as M Y, sorry M U T Y H, M U T Y H gene. See if this gene is mutated, that will also cause familial adenomatous polyposis. But here the number of polyps are going to be less when compared to the familial endomatous polyposis. Now the familial endomatous polyposis because of MYTYH gene mutation are go is going to be less a severe condition because see to put the diagnosis that the patient is having familial endomatous polyposis at least least there should be 100 polyps okay at least a minimum of 100 polyps should be present in the colon region okay 100 polyps are required but in MY TYH gene mutation, yes, it will also cause familial endomatous polyposis, but this is autosomal recessive FAP. Autosomal recessive FAP. Here, the number of polyps are going to be less than 100. Means less severe condition. Less severe condition. Okay, sir. In this familial endomatous polyposis, polyps are there. Apart from polyps, any other thing which you should know for your exam is extra colonic manifestation. Okay, extra colonic manifestation. What are the extra colonic manifestations that are seen? See, these patients will have this thing. See, this is the retina. Now, in the retina, you can see this black spot, right? This is called as congenital hypertrophy. Congenital hypertrophy of retinal pigment epithelium. So, congenital hypertrophy, congenital hypertrophy of the retinal pigment epithelium is seen in familial endomatous polyposis, autosomal recessive disorder, 100% penetrance, 100% risk of cancer in the future. So, cancer will come before 30 years of age. So, prophylactic colectomy will be done. If there is mutation of MUTYH, okay, MUTYH gene mutation, that will also cause FAB, but it is autosomal recessive FAB, where the number of polyps will be less than 100. In normal familial endomatous polyposis, in normal variety, there will be minimum of, there will be a minimum of more than 100 polyps. Extra colonic manifestations are going to be congenital hypertrophy of the retinal pigment epithelium. Okay, so these are the points which I want you to know. Apart from this, what else you should know is the variants of FAP. Variants of FAP, familial endomatous polyposis. These are also familial endomatous polyposis, but these are little different, little different. What are the variants? The first variant is going to be called as Gardner's syndrome. Okay, Gardner's syndrome. See, now tell me, Gardner's syndrome, what is the inheritance pattern? It's a FAP, right? It's nothing but a FAP. So, it is also autosomal dominant inheritance. Now, what are seen here? Same story, numerous, endomatous, polyps okay numerous endomatous polyps more than 100 they were in colon now apart from this these patients will also have tumors outside the colon also outside the colon so tumors outside colon so where else you will develop the colon they will also going to have epidermoid cysts Okay, epidermoid cysts, they will be having fibromas, osteomas and lipomas and they can also have desmoid tumors, okay, desmoid tumors. So, these are the extra colonic manifestations apart from the multiple polyps, multiple endomatous polyps in the, in the colon. These patients will have epidermoid cyst, fibromas, osteomas, lipomas and intestinal tumors. Okay. See, not only that, these patients not only have endomatous polyps in colon, but these patients will also have extra colonic polyps. They will have polyps in stomach, duodenum, liver, kidney. Okay. These things will be there. Also, these patients are going to have congenital hypertrophy of retinal pigment epithelium. It is there. Okay. These patients are also going to have that spot. Congenital hypertrophy of retinal pigment epithelium, variants of FAP. It's a variant of FAP. 
Now, the second variant of the FAB that I want to discuss here is Turcot syndrome. Turcot syndrome. So, what exactly is happening in this Turcot syndrome? So, this is also a variant of FAB. So, which inheritance pattern? Autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. See, apart from the polyps, they will also have, see, it is a FAB. It is generally a FAB, familiar endometrial polyposis. Apart from that, the neural involvement will be there. Okay, the patient is going to have the neural involvement. So, that is medulloblastoma. That is a tumor in the brain, medulloblastoma and glioblastoma. Multiforming. Along with that, these patients are also going to have congenital hypertrophy of retinal pigment epithelium. So, this is a neural involvement, neural involvement, okay, Turcot, okay. So, Turcot syndrome, the patient is going to have the neural involvement. It is just a FAB with the neural involvement, that is it. So, the next variant is also completed, okay. So, look here, look into this case. There is a 26 year old woman is evaluated for intermittent abdominal discomfort, 26 year old. Okay, general normal 26 year old, those who are listening to these lectures, most of them, most of you might be 25, 24, 26 years old, okay. This is evaluated for intermittent abdominal pain, discomfort, diarrhea is there and melana is there, diarrhea, melana is there, melana means there is some bleeding happening, okay. The patient undergoes colonoscopy followed by total colectomy, after colonoscopy there is something wrong and total colectomy was performed. Now what you can see here is, see multiple polyps are seen, okay, multiple, multiple polyps are seen, what is this? This is familial adenomatous polyposis, more than 100 polyps are seen. So, this is familial adenomatous polyposis. So, due to significant colonic abnormalities, colectomy is performed. See, rep representative colon findings are shown in the image below, I have shown you. Her sister who has same biological parents have no symptoms. Okay, her sister, she is not having any symptoms, but you got a little doubt. She is not having any symptoms, but let us do col uh, like colonoscopy in her also. Why? Because this familial, see it is a familial thing, familial endomatous polyposis, so 100% penetrance, autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. So, you got a little suspect that maybe this sister is also having this familial endomatous polyposis. So, now the sister has undergone the screening colonoscopy, okay. The sister have undergone the screening colonoscopy and has similar findings, she is also having the similar findings. If uh, left untreated, if you left her, if you left this sister without treating, which of the following is most likely lifetime risk of colon cancer? You haven't treated her, or few, like the sister is also having this familial endomatous polyposis, her sister might be, for example, she is 26, right, her sister might be 24. Now, what is the chance of getting a colon cancer in the sister? What is the lifetime risk in this patient's sister? 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%, I have said you, if there is a familial endomatous polyposis, the patient is having multiple tumors, more than 100 tumors, there is 100% risk. FAP increases the risk by 100%, 100% penetrance, 100% chance of turning into cancer. So, that is why the sister have to undergo prophylactic colectomy. Prophylactic colectomy should be performed in the sister. Now, look here, the syndromes that increases the risk of, colon, uh, the risk of cancer. See, familial endomatous polyposis. APC gene mutation, adenomatous polyposis, AP, APC gene mutation, 100% risk of colon cancer, okay. See, uh, Kutzeger syndrome, Kutzeger syndrome, STK11 gene mutations, there is also a risk of colon cancer but not 100%, like 40%, 39% risk of colon cancer, okay. So, the, about this Lynch syndrome, uh, HNPCC, Lynch syndrome is also called as HNPCC, uh, no, uh, hereditary non-polyposis, non-polyposis colon rectal cancer. See, important points about the Lynch syndrome will be discussed in the subsequent videos. So, what I want you to know is, sir, familiar endomatous polyposis, APC gene mutation, autosomal dominant, 100% penetrance, 100% risk of cancer, more than 100 polyps. You should never ever forget about these important points. So, just as a recap, what we have discussed in this video, we have discussed about the multiple types of hematomatous polyps. What are the multiple hematomatous polyps? Juvenile rectal polyp or juvenile polyposis syndrome, Fuerzeiger polyps, Cowden syndrome, tuberous sclerosis and Cronkite Canada syndrome. Cronkite Canada syndrome, non-inherited, onychodystrophy, hair loss, pigmentation, tuberous sclerosis, the mnemonic is ash leaf, A-S-H-L-E-A-F, ash leaf. Next, Pugzeger syndrome, mucocutaneous 
lentigenosis, mucocutaneous pigmentation with multiple hematomatous polyps, STK11 gene mutation. Juvenile rectal polyp, SMAD4 and a SMAD4 and BMPR1A gene mutation. The patient, the small 5 year old boy is going to present with rectal bleeding, hematochezia, which will lead to iron deficiency anemia. So these are some important points which I want you to know. In the next video, we will be discussing about the colon cancer. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.